What's up people, it's Belief, and today I wanted to go over endgame circles and how to play them. I just finished a match where my duo and I had horrible positions against the last squad. They had high ground with snipers and all we had were medium to close range weapons. But with our rotations, positionings, and legends, we were able to secure the win. And I just wanted to go over the VOD and see what we can learn and what I could help teach you guys if you guys are having issues with endgame circles. All right guys, so for some context, my teammate and I just came out of the tunnel here and we're trying to push this complex over here just because we hear some gunfights and we want to try to fight as many people as we can. We end up trying to push these guys here. They're fighting like crazy. And luckily because of Wraith's passive, I think she got notified that there was someone on top of this waterfall area. And because of that, now we know there's another squad behind us. So if we want to engage, and let me actually put this a little lower for you guys. So if you want to engage these people in this complex, we got to make sure we're smart about our positioning and that we position ourselves behind this complex here, just to make sure that if these uh, enemies on the waterfall area actually wants to push us we're not getting pinched by the team at the complex and also the waterfall team so we want to be the people pinching and not the people getting pinched okay so that's just like a general gunfight tip but in order to do that what i end up doing here i throw my pad down i ping so he knows that this is where we want to go and we end up fighting all these guys in this area so let me just go ahead and skip forward here so we killed this Maggie here and it turned out that this was the last or the third team and it's just us against these waterfall guys. Okay, so this is where these guys on top of the waterfall um, messed up. So they were playing very passive and in Apex, it, you don't get rewarded by playing very passive. You know, they might be trying to farm for like a 4k or something, which is totally fine if that's what you want to do. But if you're trying to get a win, I would definitely recommend not to play passive. Um, and also if you want to get better to play more aggressive because Apex has such a long time to kill. If they third partied us here, they would have been in such a better position because if you look at my Wraith, she has almost no armor. I'm an idiot, so I most likely died to them. Uh, but because they didn't do that and they played very passive, we were able to get all this loot that the last like three teams died at and they gave us the opportunity to just like top up on everything we need and because we know that they're in that area we're not that worried right so essentially that's what we end up doing here and we're waiting to see where the circle is gonna end up being next okay so right here we end up getting to see where the next circle is gonna be right and as you guys can see we're still in a pretty bad situation because they still have the high ground in that circle and our best option here is either one to push them directly or to go around on this right hand side and they already know where we are they have you know the long range weapons they have high ground so pushing directly at them it's not going to be the best plan even if we get a crack and we get lucky still not the best thing to do just because um they could they still have high ground on top of us if they get a nice head glitch while i like octane jump pad they could beam one of us out of the air so our best bet is to rotate around this side which is what we end up doing here and i just wanted to show you guys one thing about end circles and the mini map if you're outside of the circle the gray area actually flashes until you're back in the gray area so right there, I'm back in the gray area. So now I know that I'm actually in the end, like in the circle and I don't have to worry. So this is a really important thing to know if it's the last circle and you're trying to find a nice rat spot or want to know if you're actually in it, you don't have to open your map to zoom in. You just gotta make sure that it's not flashing gray anymore. So as we're rotating, a very important thing to do is focusing on where your enemies are. So as we're rotating here, I am continuously checking to make sure that they're still on top of this waterfall area, which because they play so passive, that's what they were doing. Um, and right here, I even check as well, just to make sure. And the reason why you want to check, because if you don't do this and the enemy team is actually smart and aggressive enough, they will end up pushing you and then you'll end up fighting halfway during your rotations. So you just want to make sure if that's the case, you are prepared for it. You don't want to get ambushed halfway. So basically we push into labs and we are waiting for the next circle. 
um, as we're waiting for the next circle it took forever to do um, we are making sure that the enemy are not actually pushing us or like having like a secret way out just in case they end up pushing us without us knowing we need to know that so we're watching them we're waiting for the circle to close so right here the circle ends up closing and it shows us that they still have a good portion of high ground above us so we're in a pretty bad spot still right obviously pushing them head on right here is not the call what i end up doing is rotating over this way just to get a good look to see what kind of cover we have and we have this arch right here which is really good cover and in my head i'm planning a few steps ahead because i know there's still one more circle left i'm hoping that that last circle is actually going to cut them off of this ledge and they're gonna have to jump down so in that case when they do jump down we have high ground uh, and we have cover while they have high ground right now what ends up happening is we rotate over to this direction and luckily we are playing mobility legends so i was able to put an octane pad in front of me and just clear this whole section without um, having to worry about getting shot at of course if you're playing legends that don't have much mobility like gibby or caustic you can still win this gunfight you just have to play a lot smarter so if you were playing someone who didn't have mobility like octane or rave you would want to rotate all the way behind this hill just the same way we rotated earlier and then um use like the tree the rock this little bike rack thing just to make sure you have some cover to rotate towards this area all right so we're pushing towards this area and what essentially happens is now we're still waiting for the end circle right because like i said before they have long range weapons we have medium and close range weapons uh right now the fight is on in their favor and all we have to do is just kind of play it slow and wait for them to miss position and find out where the next circle is and you can kind of figure out how good the players are based of how they're playing um, since these guys are playing so passive, I'm assuming they're not that great. Uh, if you guys already know, really good players, they are playing very aggressive. So those are the people you have to worry about. But these guys, the only thing they have right now is position on top of us, right? That's the only way they could beat us. Um, right here, I was a little worried about them having a Kraber, but I think it was just a Sentinel. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, they didn't hit us. So... We end up waiting for the next circle in 25 seconds here. All right, so the circle closes and it shows that they still have elevation on us. Um, but then a really good thing about this is the fact that they don't have this ledge right here um, in, in the waterfall area. Now they're forced to play this little strip of high elevation and that is going to work in our favor, right? And the reason why is because in that high elevation area where there's the little circle here that actually has more cover than this little strip right so we're poking the whole time uh just trying to mess around with them a little bit we do have a lot of meds and bats and cells so we're not worried about running out any of those things but now we have to risk it all right so the best thing to do you have like one of two options you could you know try to get on top of this little water catwalk thing and climb up that way but they're going to have more cover and high ground on top of that and you're gonna have literally no cover on that right hand side so the best thing for us to do is try to push into this little crevice here and then jump forward at them you can also play right below them but then now you're just like fish in a bucket you know what i mean so luckily because we are playing with mobility legends it's a lot easier to make these calls compared to if you're playing with like gibby or caustic like i said you could still make those calls and win the game for example if you're playing gibby and caustic you could just gibby ultimate the ledge which caused them to get off of that uh ledge and have to go either to low ground or if they're playing Gibby 2, they have the bubble or something. There's a lot of options you could do if you're playing other legends. It's just the fact that mobility legends, it's a lot easier to make plays on. So right here, I tell my Wraith that she needs to pour us into this little crevice over here so then I can Octane Pad on top of them. Like I said before, they have long range and medium range. We have close to medium range. So if we get up close and personal with them, we are going to be able to win this fight and like i said after waiting three to four circles with these guys you know how good these players are and if they're playing this passive you know that they're not as confident as you are like when it comes to gunfighting so 
our best bet is to just get up close and personal okay so right here i'm telling my rave all right you need a portal over there and luckily she has portal and i tell her i'm gonna jump pad as soon as we portal but just to make sure her portal has some cover so we're not too worried and right here we make the play there's 27 seconds left And then I jump pad right here. I was able to get on top, but because I don't know exactly the layout of this little ledge here, I jumped right into the open like an idiot and then get beamed by both of my, both of these guys. And then also as this is happening, our Wraith misses the ledge and falls down and I have a dead slide into a stupid cell. But luckily I made it alive or I made it, yeah, I made it alive with just like a sliver of health. That's like fucking one HP right there. Um, our Wraith was able to get on top and I was able to pull, like get a bat here. And luckily we're right here. We're also paying attention, right? Cause now comes in, not just your rotations and how you're playing all that, but now it comes down to your, your gunfighting skills. Luckily our Wraith was able to crack the fuse. So now I know to hit this thing and I realized why she missed the jump the first time. All bad, all bad right here. So I tell her to slow down because I have to pop a bat. And then I was also going for a med kit right here, but I stopped right here because it was a Valkyrie crack and then she got a knock, right? So even if she didn't get the knock, but she got the Valkyrie crack, you have to push this because you already have full, you have full shields, right? The fuse cracked. And then now the Valkyries crack and then Wraith's up there by herself. So you have to push this if you were in my situation. So of course I jump over, hit that freaking shit right there. And then was able to get a good beam. So as you see, she was playing cover. Luckily she knew this little map area better than me. And we were able to shoot these guys good fucking shit, bro. Good and fucking shit on them. Shit. All right. These freaking camping passive sniping assholes. You know what I mean? So. That is how we were able to out rotate and out move and know how our legends work better than the enemy team. They had the best positioning in every single circle, but we were able to outsmart them. I hope you guys learn a few things about rotating in the end game if you guys want more tips about gunfights and how to properly play that i do have a video that i'll leave at the end for you guys and hit the subscribe button if you guys want to learn more apex and grow with me as an apex player i'll see you guys next time good luck in apex peace